most of the companies who are doing air taxi, you will see on the backstage a uh, cargo drone. And why? Uh, the answer is very simple because the scalability for the cargo drones uh, will be much closer, I mean, in the time frame than air taxi. Have you taken a flying Uber yet? We're in the middle of a flight revolution. In the past two years, there's been $5 billion of investment in personal drones, multi-copters, autonomous helicopters, and vectored thrust aircraft. 129 different companies are developing almost 170 different air taxi, cargo, vertical takeoff, or landing craft. Many of these, 65% are doing electrical power and 25% are going with hybrid power models. So what's happening here? Why has investment almost 10 x in a little over a decade? We're chatting with Daniel Shaposhnikov, partner at Fistech Ventures. Welcome, Daniel. John, uh, thank you for the invitation. So let's start here, Daniel. What's going on here? Why this big burst of innovation? Globally, we see that the investment appetite is going towards deep tech companies. It's not only the drones. So we, we also see uh, high growth on the level of interest for quantum technologies, for example, or deep artificial intelligence, and et cetera, et cetera. And uh, drones, they solve, let's say, logistic or urban, urban problem. And all okay. problems like traffic jams, it's a headache for every city manager or every city uh, city man who who is spending a huge amount of time during a day moving in the traffic jam. That's why uh, society is dreaming about how how to fly over, how to use uh, the sky in this urban problem. So what are the possibilities here? What are these craft designed to do? I mean, some obviously air taxis, but not all, correct? Yeah. So from my perspective, air taxi topic is a little bit hypey, you know, because mm, on this kind of uh, innovation, uh, companies are trying to raise a large sum of money. And if you will see uh, the website, of even each company, no, maybe not all, but most of the companies who are doing air taxi, you will see on the backstage uh, cargo drone. And why? Uh, the answer is very simple because the scalability for the cargo drones uh, will be much closer, I mean, in the time frame than air taxi. Mm -hmm. Significantly less amount of problems we have to start cargo logistic via, via the drones. So I mean, uh, regulations, I mean, even the technology, even the electrification of this kind of drone, because not all of them will need 100% pure electrical engine. When you fly over the mountain or over the sea, you know, you can use some kind of a hybrid scheme. And it will be also mm -hmm. very you know, much more ecological than, than pure drone combustion engine, but still it will allow the aircraft to, to have a significant uh, time of flight and no, I mean, the distance. Yes. Yeah. I mean, let's talk about that power plant right now, because you know, of the ones that you've studied, 72% uh, are being developed for urban areas. You know, what's our city going to look like in, in 10 years? Are we going to have dozens, hundreds of these little flying cargo drones, as well as flying taxis all over our cities? Yeah. So basically, uh, what we will definitely, definitely see, uh, changed, uh, air traffic management in the city. That's for sure. Because currently what we can see in the sky, is on the helicopter sometime. Mm -hmm. In most case, in most cases, it's uh, some kind of a governmental helicopter or um, emerging, uh, and uh, that's it. And it's very noisy. And yes. I'm sure that uh, you know this. You feel this. You hear this. And that's why uh, it's it's one of the problems why helicopters are still 
not doing uh, internal city lo logistics in the scale. That's one of the problems. Mm -hmm. And when, when we, uh, for example, are dreaming about hundreds of air taxis are flying in the city, the first thing we need is uh, reliable air traffic management. Mm -hmm. Because you know that nobody wants <laughs> the air taxi uh, land or fall on uh, somebody's or whatever country are, you know? It's, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, what you're saying is you people don't want uh, them landing on their property. And also, you don't want uh, accidents up in the air. You you need to have some way of managing all that traffic, making sure it goes safely in the right places, not in the wrong places. And also, you need something that is not crazy noisy, which speaks to the electrification that we we're talking about, the EV uh, era of flying vehicles. Uh a huge percentage of the ones that you studied are actually electrically powered, but it's not just from battery, correct? Correct. Uh, so the first thing that we need to uh, take into consideration is the distributed electrical propulsion. So this gives most of the air taxi the reliability. And this allows uh, air taxi to use different uh, energy systems, including the storage. We can use batteries, sometimes in some electrical schemes, capacitors, sometimes even fuel cells. I mean, hydrogen fuel cells. You know that, of course, the hydrogen fuel cells for the uh, aircrafts, I mean, the technology overall is currently on rather low stage of for technology readiness, but uh, but it's continuously improving and uh, the companies, startups are moving fast. So I think, and I see in the report that already uh, more than 10% of the companies that are trying to uh, take off electrical uh, air taxi are making a bet on a fuel cell. Mm -hmm. And it's impressive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you found 129 companies, they're building almost 170 different types of craft. Where are these companies globally? Uh, where's this innovation happening? You know, uh, that, uh, interesting thing that, um, a huge, maybe, you know, near, near half of such companies were founded and are operating in Europe mm. and, uh, also about, I guess. 40 plus percent are in, in states mm -hmm. and the rest, very, very small amount of companies are in Asia and in, in other, in other sectors of the world. So that's why we can see that two majors, Europe and, uh, and, uh, in states, of course, as, as in, uh, most of the technologies, China. Uh, China, you know, they, they are doing also not, not bad, but the amount of, uh, companies that we can count is rather low, but, uh, yeah. interesting thing, interesting thing that, um, according to our boat, so Ihan, it's a rather famous mm -hmm. Chinese yep. company is doing, is doing well. So, and, uh, we can even say that currently, um, Ihan is, uh, so the, I mean, the stage of the development of the Ihan technology, maybe is the most solid. This episode is sponsored by Dollar Smart, my creator coin. Yeah, it's crypto. No, it's not a scam. Buy some to support the show, sponsor the show, get weekly rewards as the coin grows, or just to be part of the community at rally.io slash creator slash smrt yeah i i saw their technology i saw their drone their people mover i think it was two maybe three years ago at ces actually quite impressive i think that's a, a bit of a chinese model um 
as kind of the state wants a few big companies to do really, really well and ensures that they do well versus the European model, the American model. Hey, it's venture capital. We'll throw it out in 25 different places, 35 different places, see who you know, sinks and see who swims. What are some of the key brands that we should know? Uh, you mentioned Ehang from uh, China. What are some of the other brands that we should know? Mm, the most interesting mm, are unicorns, of course, because uh, all investors are monitoring how many companies in each vertical uh, became unicorns. What is the time frame of the of of uh, becoming the unicorns, and what money we need to spend to get these un unicorns on the table? And we can say we can say here that. About seven years need a company and about in the average, about uh, half of the billion dollars to become a unicorn mm -hmm. in, in the vertical mm -hmm. of vertical to take off and landing aircrafts. And, uh, you know, that you, unicorns, uh, you, unicorns, are r rather famous and we can mention. For example, two companies, uh, we can ma mention, uh, I think Joby Aviation. Yes, they are doing ra rather well. And, uh, also we can mention, uh, Archer, of course, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. uh, some others, of course, Lilium. Interesting thing, uh, that among the unicorns only, uh, Beta and Volocopter are trying to sell. So we, we cannot say that they already shipped something. Yes. Yes. But, but, yeah. uh, it seems according to the public information, of course, it seems, uh, that they signed, uh, binding contracts okay. and it's, it's, it's really impressive. So I like, I like companies that, that are starting sale. Yeah, if I recall from the report, I think it was about 19 different companies that were uh, starting to sell right now out of the 130. Uh, about 13. Oh, 13. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 13 companies and most of them are shipping cargo drones. Currently, uh, only th three companies are trying to sell air passenger aircraft mm -hmm. and uh, only e -Hank as, as I understand from the public information is really selling. So e -Hang, uh, published that last year it sold, uh, 22 machines. Okay. So, and, uh, of course these machines are sold for kind of a pilots, but still it's impressive. Absolutely. Okay, maybe let's end here. Um, look into your crystal ball, look at the future a little bit and say, you know, when will air taxis and drone delivery be normal? Do you think that's five years, 10 years, 20 years? What do you think it is? You know, uh, it seems that um, during next five years, we will see uh, scale of cargo drone delivery. And the, in different payloads, I mean that it will be small, uh, small aircrafts like zipline or Maternet are doing, for example, or, uh, heavy payloads for drones, like, mm -hmm. uh, out of flight, like, uh, Aura, Air Scout, Skilder is doing so. And, uh, Air Taxi, from my perspective, is different, is a little bit more complicated story. Because if you will look at a uh, Volocopter roadmap that they published recently, you know, it includes lots of details, uh, infrastructural details, regulational details, safety, and, uh, it's, it's a complicated stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I think that first of all, they will need reliable and certified air taxi machine and, the, mm -hmm. and, the, and it's a huge problem and the second problem is an infrastructure air traffic management and etc etc and uh, this will also take time 
Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm uh, sure that we will see uh, the, this kind of business uh, inside the cities. But of course, first uh, first r- routes of air taxi will definitely appear out of the cities because it's much easier. Absolutely safer, uh, less busy environment, um, fewer regulations, more places to land if you need to, uh, all that stuff. Uh, And also having a base of operations where you can recharge or refuel or whatever you might need. Daniel, thank you so much for taking this time. Do appreciate it. Thank you. It's, It's my pleasure.